Welcome to this week's Walther Showroom Update. I'm Zach, and this week I'm going to be showing off brand new samples of the second run of the GP35 from Walther's Proto. We've got four of the six schemes that are coming in December. We're going to get right to it. Let's go. All right, so with all these units, you're going to notice some of the finer details like the MU hoses, train line air hose, see through steps in the recessed brake ratchet in the nose. There's either four or eight jack pads along the sill as appropriate per road, and there's various fuel tank air filter. Uh, and, and different options with or without DV hatches. That's, those are all appropriate per road. Toward the back of the unit, you're gonna see some finely detailed phase two radiator grills and see-through radiator fans with fan grills as appropriate per road. And they're all great details. Um, and, and you're gonna see them, we're gonna pause long enough on each section so that you get a good look at each one of them. But for today, on each of these roads, I'm gonna concentrate mainly on introducing the road specific features. And it just so happens that all the units I'm showing you have sunshades, high headlights and 2600 gallon fuel tanks. Those are three features that can vary from road to road, but here for the four that I'm gonna show you, they've all got the same. Starting off with this CNO chassis unit from the 1970s to 1980s. Uh, we're gonna start off at the nose of the unit, which is equipped with an MU cable holder and no footboards. As you can see, the unit has a high headlight, Leslie S3L air horn and a whip style radio antenna. And just behind the cab, there's a telltale phase two spotting feature and the raised inertial air filter hatch. Below that, you'll see some mesh as opposed to the ribbed intake grills. And although it's on the other side and you can't see it here, the unit's equipped with a short air filter. So along the body, you're gonna see the uh, dynamic brake hatch and fan. And the chassis unit is equipped with four jack pads and you can see the standard mounting position for the bell underneath the sill. And toward the back of the unit, we're gonna hover nicely uh, just over the phase two radiator grills and the radiator fan grills. And then finally to the end of the unit, you can see all the grabs going up the back. All right, next up is a Conrail with the 1970s to 1980s blue and white scheme, which are actually former Erie Lackawanna units, so fans of that road may recognize some of the features from a prior EL run. Moving on over to the nose here, you'll see that like the chassis, the unit is equipped with an MU cable holder and no footboards. And we'll gently move on up to the cab. You'll see a striking Leslie SU-3LR air horn. There's a Sinclair radio antenna, and just behind the cab, there's a raised inertial air filter, uh, otherwise known as the dustbin hatch. Below that, you'll see the mesh intake grills, now on the opposite side, uh, you can't see it here, but there's a tall can air filter on the opposite side. As we move down the body, you'll see the dynamic brake fan hatch and fan, the four jack pads, and the bell that's painted black just below the sill. We've got our phase two grills and radiator fans. And then moving to the back of the unit, just like on the front of the unit, the pilot is equipped with an MU cable holder and no footboards. Third in our presentation is the handsome Gulf Mobile in Ohio, as it was seen in service from the 1960s through the 1980s. It's got a black and white paint scheme with yellow trim. This thing is a looker. We're gonna go ahead and move on over to the nose. And as we do, I'm just gonna quickly remind you that this is a pre-production sample. There's gonna be some minor paint corrections that we make before it goes into production. So the pilots are equipped with an MU cable holder and no footboards. Moving on up to the cab, there's a Leslie S5TR air horn and a firecracker antenna just behind that. The raised dustbin hatch and the mesh intake grills are behind the cab, and the GM&O unit on the other side is equipped with a short can air filter. On the midsection of the locomotive, you'll find a dynamic brake hatch and fan, and then it's got eight jack pads. And the painted black bell just underneath the sill is in the standard position. Moving on back to the rear of the unit, we're going to make a pick stop here at the truck, which you'll see is actually an AAR Type B truck taken from an Alco trade-in. That's opposed to the standard Blomberg B trucks with the outside brake shoes that you've seen on all the other samples shown today. And finally, we'll show off the ends here with the various yellow handrails and grabs and it really finishes off the locomotive quite well. The Rock Island features a rich maroon and yellow scheme with white handrails. We're going to go ahead and start off on the nose, where you'll see that the Rock is equipped with the front snow plow. Moving up to the cab, you can see there's a high headlight, Nathan 5 chime horn, firecracker antenna, and the raised dustbin hatch behind the cab. 
This unit's equipped with a short air filter on the other side of the unit. Uh, and along the body, you're actually gonna see that the bell is mounted on the long hood. And most noticeably, this is the one unit of the bunch that does not employ dynamic brakes, making the midsection here look a little bit bare in the absence of the DB hatch. Move on towards the rear of the unit. And when we get to the rear, you're going to see that the rear pilot is equipped with footboards. All right, so this is a second run of an incredibly detailed brand new locomotive. It's all new tooling. We just introduced it for the first time earlier this year. Um, and they're, they're definitely worth checking out. They're modern workhorses. They've been in use for over four decades. Uh, it's great for any modern layout. Um, there's two schemes that we actually did not show today. It's the Santa Fe and the Southern Pacific. Those are also coming in this run in December. I would absolutely recommend pre-ordering these units. The, the run that we got in April, a number of the units have already sold out. So check with your local hobby shop or over at walters.com and get your pre-orders in uh, right away. So that's our show for this week. Thank you very much. Come back in two more weeks as we're going to be going over some brand new cornerstone announcements that we're making in mid-October. You don't want to miss this.